So fresh off the introduction of the fourth generation hybrid only Sienna for 2021, one of the most fuel efficient seven to eight passenger minivans on the market, Toyota is upping the van's outdoors activity capability. So for 2022, the new Sienna Woodland Special Edition combines adventure inspired rugged styling, a standard electronic on-demand all-wheel drive system, and increased ground clearance for taking the fun further afield. In addition to the new Woodland Edition, the 22 Sienna line adds a few updates for its sophomore year. The XLE grade now gets the optional 18-inch wheel design. Second row Ottomans are available for the Limited and Platinum grades with all-wheel drive. Windchill Pearl replaces Blizzard Pearl as a premium color offering. And the Woodland Edition is available in the cement exterior color, exclusive to the Woodland Edition, as well as Midnight Black Metallic. Toyota reimagined the Sienna for its fourth generation assembled in the U.S. to support a wider array of life stages and activities than the typical minivan. That included answering the call for more luxury, multimedia, and outdoors amenable features. The latter includes a line of Yakima accessories such as a rooftop carrier, crossbars, bike rack, and more. The outdoor strategy theme escalates with the 2022 Woodland Edition. Designed specifically to accommodate the rising popularity of outdoor activities among buyers, the Sienna Woodland Special Edition offers cargo and passenger space comparable to a large SUV. The Woodland Edition and any 22 Sienna equipped with the electronic on-demand all-wheel drive system achieves a remarkable EPA estimate 35 miles per gallon combined. Sienna models with the front-wheel drive get 36. The new generation Sienna combines a standard hybrid powertrain with all-wheel drive, which is available as an option on all model grades. So this is available with exclusive cement and midnight black metallic exterior colors, offers distinctive exterior and premium interior styling. Added standard and exclusive features include the following. Electronic on-demand all-wheel drive, plus added ground clearance to take on dirt roads with confidence. A 1,500-watt inverter with a 120-volt AC outlet to power camping equipment or most household items for a short day trip or overnight camping excursion. Tow hitch with 3,500-pound towing capability, ideal for hauling personal watercraft, dirt bikes, or ATVs. Roof rails with crossbars. Black sport trim seats with unique earth tone stitch color. 18-inch alloy wheels. Dark chrome color accents. Black badging. And navigation with JBL. 1200 watt audio system with 12 speakers. The 2022 Sienna Woodland Edition comes exclusively with the seven seat configuration with super long slide second row captain's chairs, the split and stow third row seat, and kick activated power sliding rear doors make it easy to load and carry recreational equipment. Heated front seats, sunshades in the second row, and a total of seven USB ports across all three rows will ensure comfort and convenience for everybody inside. The 22 Sienna Woodland Edition is also on a mission for each one sold. Toyota will make a $250 donation to the National Environmental Education Foundation with a guaranteed minimum donation of $250,000. The funds will support the National Environment Education Foundation's mission to make the environment more accessible, relatable, relevant, and connected to people's lives. You can read more right now on everymandriver.com. All right, let me take a guess. Statistically speaking, you're probably between 25 and 49. Most likely you are female because I have a minivan. Statistically speaking, odds are you have a family. Otherwise, why would you be looking at a seven to eight passenger family hauler? Maybe you're environmentally friendly because this is a hybrid. It comes standard as a hybrid this year. And your price range is between 35 and 50. And that's exactly what this vehicle is. Hey, what's going on? I'm Dave Erickson with Everyman Driver. Thank you so much for watching. This ought to be good because I've got some disagreements with uh, the missus about this vehicle. I've got some notes from her compared to my notes, some pros and cons. This is not a review as much as it is a parent's point of view on uh, some good things and bad things, things that you might want to look at when you do your test drive as a future owner of this Toyota Sienna. Let's get started. All right, this has been fully redesigned for 2021. 
Out is the old V6, now standard is this uh, hybrid engine. It is a 2.5 liter four cylinder, 36 miles per gallon in mixed driving. So I know that might be a big factor for you looking at an economical family hauler, which this is. 245 horsepower. The last one was 295 with a V6, but I don't think you're really too concerned about power, are you? If you're wondering about the credentials of this hybrid, it's the same engine they use in the RAV4 hybrid and the Highlander hybrid. So it's in very good company when it comes to its powertrain. All right, let me get right to the notes from the missus. She calls this a barreling boat, eager to take off at a stop sign. So she's not too happy about the controls of the brake and the accelerator, which I also had that problem as well. Then again, she does drive a Tesla, so the driving mechanism there is much different than uh, this hybrid here. Lane departure warning, she says, is super sensitive. She wasn't liking that it was constantly moving her back in the lane or the steering wheel is vibrating and making these alerts, so she actually just turned it off. Two positives and then one more negative from the missus. She does say it's a comfortable family hauler. We took this uh, about 40 miles over the weekend to uh, a place in Idaho. We have two car seats in here. We have plenty of space in the back, which is a big bonus for this. A lot of passenger space and cargo space more than the outgoing model. She felt as a five foot five woman that this was a perfect height for stepping in and out as opposed to some of the other vehicles where you have to actually step up into the vehicle. This was an easy, seamless transition into the driver's seat, which I totally agree with. By the way, this comes in five trim levels, LE, XLE, XSE, Limited, and Platinum. We have, which one do we have? We have the XLE, front wheel drive is standard. All wheel drive is available on all trim levels, and that's what we have on ours this week. One more, oh, by the way, towing capability up to 3,500 pounds for a minivan. This isn't necessarily a new feature. In fact, it's not, but you, with the key fob, you can press a button, open both side doors. You can also do that from the driver's seat, little buttons above, uh, above where your head is. You can press those buttons and to close it, there's a couple of tabs just on the inside so you can close it that way. Now, here's a good thing about what this has to offer for parents. It has a sliding middle row. And remember, this does have seating for up to eight passengers. We have the captain's chairs in the middle, so we're looking at the seven seat configuration. Now look at the seat travel, which I find is very helpful as a parent trying to move things and negotiate and navigate the inside of the vehicle, which has a lot of space, is that this seat here travels oh, front and back. Look how far back that goes. And that's with a car seat in it. That's why it's a little bit harder for me to do this, but look how far back it goes. Now this is great when you're not using the back seats because once you do uh, put the back seats up, that's gonna crush your leg room. But over here is where she has a big problem with the rear facing car seat. Now I'm gonna have a lot more information on everymandriver.com. I just wanna give you that practical parent's point of view on what we experienced this week. Now this is what she doesn't like and I totally agree with her here. Now this seat, of course, this one travels as well just like the other one, but it's rear facing. So if you have a little one, it is very challenging to get them in the seat here you see, you see, you can't quite get this spot with the child because either you're gonna hit up here, and if I do slide it forward a little bit more, that's as far as it goes because the seat is hitting the passenger's front seat. So even sliding it back, now I have no access or it's a lot harder to get the child in or out. So rear facing in the middle row, that's the best that you can do. That's the best we can do in our week of driving. Little one wasn't very happy about it. All right, cargo now. Here's the button. When it's blue like this on the Toyota logos, that lets you know that's a hybrid. So if you ever see blue in, in the uh, part of the emblem, that's why you know it's a hybrid vehicle. So right here, you're looking at all the space back here with the seats, they're converged into the bottom of the car, so you really can't see it at all. So if you wanna use this area like we did, or I put my bicycle back here, in fact, was able to put my bike standing up in the back in between the seats, which was pretty convenient, but I'm gonna take this out. Here is where the seats have been stowed away. And now they're in their upright position. So they say you can get three people back here. Those are three very small people, most likely children. Now what's cool about the back area is what space has been created by bringing these seats upright. Here, I'll show you. Here we go. If you want, you could, and I have, uh, used this for space with groceries, which was so great this weekend. In fact, I brought my, uh, my son over to daycare recently, and he was sitting back here just momentarily before he took off. He goes, it's so cozy. He's three years old. It is so cozy back here. And I said, nope, you can't sit back here. Get back in the front, put your seatbelt on, let's go. Anyhow, 
that's a, a big open area that you can utilize for uh, groceries, for luggage, which we did over the weekend. And to close these up, they got one and two labeled here. One, bring it here, two, one. And now, as it's stowed away, you can use all, all that space here. Again, they say there's more cargo and passenger space than the outgoing model, which is a big uh, confidence booster for me as a parent thinking, would I want one of these? Well, it's bigger than last year. Maybe so. Also, there are USB ports back here. So if someone is in the back and they wanna keep their devices charged, you got two different options for USBs. And also there's a rear entertainment drop down that's over here that they can plug in and listen to while they're in the back. So they have some entertainment if they don't have their smart devices, which they always do have their smart devices. All right, a few more things that you'll find convenient as a, as a parent taking road trips, all the different ledges and cubby holes available and charging. Technology is uh, upgraded this year versus last year. They got a wireless charging pad up here on this little ledge. Plenty of cubby holes in the door panel. Cup holders everywhere. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Some in the back. Here's another one of those cubby holes and storage compartments just below the center armrest. So you can see it there. Easy to take advantage of for putting purses down there, uh, diaper bags, other supplies. So really thoughtful on what you may or may not need on road trips as a parent. There's also a USB up here in addition to the wireless charging pad. I just plugged in my phone and they've got Apple CarPlay as an option here. So that pops up after I've synced it up and now I can listen to my shows easily there. Go back to the Toyota itself. So there's the Apple CarPlay interface. Pretty standard, you've seen that before. Uh, very colorful and um, easy to understand. Here in the instrument cluster, you'll see they can show you which doors are open on the vehicle. So if you were to get out, you can see that the red ones there, both side doors and the driver door are open. So that information is available for you. Otherwise, here's a closer look at some of this. For the cup holders, there are three drive modes. Funny, it's a sport mode. There's normal and then there's eco. So I actually use sport mode and I thought there was a little bit of a jump in power, but not much. It's kind of fun just to think that, oh, a minivan has a sport mode. And of course, it also has an EV mode. More examples of how you can use a space along the edges. We uh, really were able to use this during our road trip when it was a bottle, keys, whatever you, whatever we needed just to like put it somewhere, but also keep it in plain view. They do have a sliding sunroof right here for the front two passengers, but not in the back because they have a drop down menu here for entertainment. So there's an entertainment system and they even have uh, headphones and controls here the back of these seats, they can pop these on and watch what's up there, just like that. And more USB ports right there, boom, boom, and uh, more charging down here. So yeah, a lot of new technology, available technology to keep everyone plugged in, connected. So when you are on your road trip, hey, you've got just about everything you need. At least we did. So I know it's not your traditional review per se, uh, but, I want to give you a story of what it's like to live with this minivan. And I think we've really taken advantage of it this week by going on a road trip, using the car seats in the back, testing things out and utilizing the technology, the space, uh, driving. I'm not sure if I really agree with barreling down the road. I find it to be very comfortable to drive, absorbs the bumps pretty well. A soft ride, you know, we have some bumps down our road here, uh, down the, the dirt road, and it's like, oh, no big deal. Pot ro potholes weren't, weren't a big issue whatsoever. Uh, but she did find it hard to navigate because it's a longer vehicle, which you'll always have to deal with that in parking spots, in the grocery store, the mall, whatever it may be. So yeah, a longer vehicle, but barreling down the road, I'm not sure I agree with that. I found it to be a very comfortable, easy ride, and uh, not sporty whatsoever, even though it does have a sport mode. You're not gonna have as much power as the outgoing model, but hey, for between 35 and $50,000 with different trim levels, the all wheel drive option, you can tow in it, the sliding middle row, all the technology that they're to offer, it's definitely worth a look and absolutely a test drive. If you are in that 25 to 49 age group, you most likely are a parent looking at this because that's what I would be doing. So I wanna give you that perspective as a parent after a full week. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope that was helpful in your shopping and research experience. I'll put more information if you want on everymandriver.com, but that's basically the nuts and bolts of what this vehicle is all about in my humble opinion. Thank you for watching. I feel like I've been rambling. Talk to you later, adios. Thanks for watching. Please cr click subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time.